Right. Uh, once again, welcome. My name is Perry from uh, Engineering Institute of Technology. I am based in the in the South African office, and uh, today's topic will be looking at our undergraduate um, higher education programs. Um, this will be presented by our um, higher education manager uh, Emma Hart, and uh, she's not alone this time around. She will be uh, with our um, uh, 2024 student ambassador, EIT student ambassador, uh, Ilana and Lee. So we, we're looking forward to hear some. Uh, uh, exciting comments and feedback from uh, our student ambassadors. And obviously for people who are keen to join EIT, this is about time for you to hear what EIT is all about, uh, the experience of studying at EIT. So you will be hearing from um, Ilana and Lee. And then uh, we will be sharing the copy of uh, this recording and the slides. Uh, this will be sent to you via email in the next uh, uh, two business days. So just um, ensure that you check your um, junk or, or spam folder. So uh, I'm just going quick, to quickly give you an overview level of a uh, high level overview uh, about what we do at EIT. So EIT uh, focuses and specializes purely on engineering programs. As you can see here, we do uh, our professional certificates. Those are like our short courses for three months. Then you go into our diplomas, advanced diplomas, undergraduate, graduate certificates, bachelor's and master's, and then our highest level of qualification is our doctorate. So once again, um, our, our courses are industry designed. And as, as you can agree with me that uh, the industry is changing, the technology is changing. And uh, what really what we do at EIT is we, we ensure that our materials and our resources are, are up to date just to ensure that we keep up with the trends and, and, and the changes in the industry. So as a student, what you learn at EIT and, and upon completion, you still have what is still relevant in the in the industry. Uh, we we just like any higher education provider in Australia, so uh, we are accredited with uh, a higher education provider and um, what you call this Australian government, uh, TEXA, and then we also have uh, some of our programs that are recognised under under three international engineering accords. Uh, we source our lectures uh, from different parts of the globe. So you, you, you get to have a, a truly perspective of um, global uh, you know, engineering uh, uh, overview from uh, our different lectures in various regions. And also we use uh, very unique methods in terms of delivering our programs. We, we have webinars and also we have um, uh, remote labs and simulation when coming to um, student completing their their practicals. So I'm just going to quickly now um, hand things over to my colleague, Emma. You can take it away. Thanks very much. Thanks, Barry. Um, welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining this session. So just a little bit about me quickly. Um, I am definitely not an engineer. Um, so my background is actually in teaching and in languages. Um, and I oversee the higher education department here based in our Perth campus in Australia um, and oversee all the administration side. So I work with the learning support team, which I'll talk a little bit more about shortly, um, as well as the administration teams are getting you enrolled into your units um, and making sure that you're fully supported along the way. So as uh, Barry just mentioned, we do have a couple of our student ambassadors. So thank you to both of you for taking the time out and, and joining us today. So they're gonna tell you a little bit about their journey. Um, it's obviously different hearing from me, um, working at EIT and running these programs to listening to students who are actually studying and have studied in the program. So it's a real good insight to hear what it's really like from a student perspective. So a huge thank you to you both for taking the time out because I know you both, um, you work as well as study um, and uh, have children. So it's a, a real um, pleasure to have you guys here. 
So as Barry said, what we'll do, I will run through the, the courses, um, a bit of information about the support and what we offer both online and on campus. And then I'll hand over to our ambassadors to, to give you a bit more of um, a feel of what it's like to be a student and, and from their experience and what they've enjoyed. So just starting off, um, in our undergraduate programs, we have what's firstly called undergraduate certificates. Um, these are generally one semester courses, so a six month course, and they basically have four units, units that are also part of the graduate, um, sorry, the, the bachelor degree. So in the undergraduate certificates, we have one specifically for each stream. So civil, electrical, industrial automation and mechanical, but we also have what's called engineering foundations. So for some students who aren't 100% sure on a specific stream, so they're not sure maybe in industrial automation or electrical, the foundations course gives you the basis and time to then decide. The four units that you would do here if you chose to go on to study the bachelor, the four units would all be credited into that next bachelor degree. So you'd get full credit for those. You would not have to repeat. Um, so depending on whether you are studying part time or whether you are full time, um, you can take between one to four units. If you take four units, obviously you're finished in the semester. But if you need to take a little bit of extra time and you only want to do two units or one unit because you are also working, you're able to do so as long as you complete the qualification within three years, um, you can take your time working through. What we have in a semester, which is same as our bachelor's. So there are 12 study weeks. So you do generally six weeks of study. You have a mid semester break. You have another six weeks of study, a study break, and then any exams. So if you are studying in the undergraduate certificate unit, you'll also be studying alongside the bachelor students as they are the same units. Um, so you will get also then to hear from the bachelor students of how they're going as well. So you sit alongside them. And as I said, at the end of this undergraduate certificate, you can then complete and continue on. Um, with the bachelor if you choose, or you can finish at the undergraduate certificate and take that qualification away. So you see on the right hand side of the slide where you've got the AQF qualifications. Um, this just explains the levels in Australia. So the bachelor degree is level seven and you see underneath there the undergraduate certificate is listed, not with a specific level because it is aligned in with level seven. So these were um, courses that probably about three, four years ago, the, the government decided um, to give a qualification status to um, for students who weren't sure if they wanted to go into the bachelor, but wanted to get the experience and a, and a quali qualification along the way. So we do have a lot of our undergraduate certificate students who do complete the certificate and then go on to continue on into the bachelor, decide they want to continue studying. And as I said, those units completed get credited across. You would not be expected to do the same units. Again, you'd get full credit obviously if you had passed those units so you need to pass those units um, 50 percent pass rate to then um, have the credit transferred into the bachelor degree so moving on to our bachelor of science degrees so we have the four different streams within the bachelor of science and we run these courses here on our campus in perth which is our brand new campus we um we moved in here the beginning of this year so we are extremely close to the the city um, just down the road. So if you are a student who's thinking you'd love to come on campus, it's a great location. Um, brand new facilities, including our teaching labs as well with a lot of equipment, which I'll talk about as we go through. Um, so we've got the four streams in here. You see the information there of how many units. So there are all up 25 units um, that you would need to complete as part of that bachelor degree. There are 24 units that have three credit points and then you have the final project, which is nine credit points. So the equivalent of three of the other units, but you also have workshops and work experience to complete as well, which I'll talk about shortly. 
The good thing with the Bachelor of Science is within those 25 units or 24 units, there are two electives that you're able to take. So for each stream, there's a variety of electives where you can take units that are outside of that stream if you're interested in learning a little bit more in another area, but also um, if you are wanting to specialize, um, each stream does have specific electives that really focus on a specific area um, in that specific stream. So a range that you can choose from. So it's good having those electives, a little bit of choice um, and things that you're really interested. So students will take between one to five units per semester. So if you are an on-campus student and you are a full-time student, you would take nine units over the year. So five in one semester, four in the other. If you are part-time and you're studying online, you again, like the undergraduate certificate, it can range from if you're really busy working, um, you could take one or two units a semester. And then when you had time, you could take more um, a lot of our online students are working and um, just like our student ambassadors um, do have to try and balance the study alongside working. So there are times that students will say, um, you know, I, I've got a new job. I'm very busy this coming semester, so I'd only like to take one unit and then down the track the next semester, they can increase to two or three, depending. Um, if you did it full time, um, it's a three year program. But again, if you're taking it part time, um, you do have a maximum of eight years to complete the unit, um, to complete the bachelor course. So if you are doing it part time, if you need to take a semester off, because again, you're very busy working, if that's the case, that's able to, to occur um, as long as you do complete within the eight years. Now, one thing that I think is something that EIT has that a lot of other institutes and universities don't have, it's what we call learning support officers. So from my experience, when I first started um, working at EIT, I found this role to be amazing because in any other institute that I have worked in, these people don't exist. So essentially, what you have when you're in your class, of course, you have your lecturers, which we'll mention and look at a, in a little bit later. But you also have for each of your units what's called a learning support officer. So your learning support officer will work you through the unit from the beginning of it all the way through until you complete the unit. Now, each unit does have a different lecturer and therefore has a different learning support officer. So you may have, if you're studying two units, two different lecturers, but you could have two different learning support officers. They help you throughout the course. Um, they are what I often say are a little bit like your personal assistance for your unit. So they are not the academics, they are the administrators that work you through making sure you know how to access the materials, know how to access the, um, the platforms that we use. They talk to you about the tutorials, make sure you're able to get into them. Um, they work with you through assessment dates, handing in things. If you needed an extension, they work with you on those. Um, so they are basically there to help you along each unit that you're studying. So really helpful to have. So if at any point in time, you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing or you're confused about an assessment or you need help with something, your learning support officers are the first people um, that you go to. So these guys are fantastic. We, in the higher education department, um, we have learning support officers here in Perth. We have them in our Melbourne campus. Um, we also have one over in Brisbane on the um, east coast of Australia, but we also have two in South Africa, um, looking at almost a third there as well. Um, and we will have one in the UK as well. So in a variety of time zones to be able to help and answer your query. And you may find if you send an email to the higher education team, um, if it's not specifically about your unit, um, you may get an answer. 
pretty quick because we have people working in all of these dis different time zones. So you may get an email from one of the other support officers able to answer your question. So with having these people in different time zones and all students in different time zones, it's really helpful um, and, and good for supporting you guys um, on your study journey. So something very different that a lot of other institutes don't have, which I think is amazing. Something else we have with our student support is our student support services team. Um, and we have what are called the student success workshops. So there is a monthly calendar and this is for online and on campus students where we will run a variety of sessions and they could range from health and well-being information. Um, there may be specific academic workshops. So um, doing revision, time management, um, exam techniques skills that sometimes um, we we don't have or we haven't studied for a long time and therefore it's things that are good to help and do refreshes so these are a range of things they are not compulsory but we recommend students to attend if it is happening in a time zone that is not good for you we also do record these sessions so you can always go back and watch these when needed um, so we have a different calendar each month a different session um, on different things and and we also take feedback from students so if our students tell us like we'd really like to do um, something specific or we're really struggling with this can you help with this um, we would look at putting those sessions on so we also run information sessions as part of our student success workshops on things like RPLs recognition of prior learning as well as looking at the industrial experience that students have to do internships um, so we run a range of information sessions we often have guest speakers come in from industry and again they are often live sessions but we always do record them or stream them out um, so students who are available um, to watch them at that point in time can stream in but if not you're able to watch the recording at a later time that would suit you Oh, just on that last one, I just forgot. Um, what we've also introduced, it's what's called the English for Technical Professionals course. Um, it's via what's called IEEE, which is where we have our online library. So a lot of our materials are all online. Now, this is a course that um, students have for free. So it is a fully online, I think if you did it all together, 18 to 20 hours, um, an English course where it is not your typical English. So anybody who's thinking, oh, well, I speak English. Why do I need to do an English course? This is silly. This is specifically for engineers um, and it ranges in there from sessions on being able to understand manuals and policies all the way through to doing presentations and presentation skills. Um, so you could work through this at your own pace. There is no requirement for you to complete it within you know, two or three weeks, but you could also then look through and there may be specific lessons that are specific to you and you think, yeah, I've got a presentation coming up. I haven't done one in a long time. Let me have a look at this specific lesson um, and it can give me some tips and tools to help. So we have this free for all of our students, both online and on campus in order to help you um, with the skills that you need to, to succeed within your courses. So looking at the software, we do use a range of software and this is both for online and on campus. So our learning management system where you find all of the unit materials, the assessments and where you'll see your grades are all on Moodle. We use what's called Big Blue Button, and that's where all of your live tutorial sessions will run through if you're online. Obviously, if you're on campus, um, we're running, obviously, in the classroom. You'll have your lecturer standing in front of you. But for those online, um, we do host it through Big Blue Button. That's quite interactive. We also have Iris, our invig invigilation software. So when you're having to do timed assessments, when you're doing exams, um, 
instead of obviously the traditional room where we'd say you all have to sit together in a room um, and have someone watching you, um, Iris Invigilation does this for us and for you. So it's a software that you have on your computer and as you do your exam, it will um, basically watch you do your exam. So we can make sure that you're doing the right thing, you're not cheating and nothing bad's happening. We've also got our remote labs. So we've got a variety of different softwares available where you can remote in. So you physically don't have to come to the campus and use equipment. You can come in remotely to any of our labs and our software. Obviously we have the Microsoft Office package that you get um, and that includes, you'll have obviously your EIT email account, Word, Excel, all of those um, that you need for doing your assessments and presentations. And lastly, we have a, a new student management system, which is called Paradigm. Um, and that's where you'll see the invoices, there'll be information um, on payments and also what your upcoming units are. So they're pretty much um, all of the systems, but as it says at the bottom, you do control your learning. Um, you, when, when you need to use the remote labs, you book in at a time that works for you. Um, and so you, you control what you're doing. So as I mentioned, when I mentioned the, the courses earlier, uh, we do have workshops and what's called integrated work, integrated learning. So as part of our courses, instead of just having theory where you sit in the classroom, we have a practical element to it. So there are specific workshops and these workshops usually run twice a year in the breaks between the semesters. We run them on campus in Perth. Uh, we run some in South Africa and in the future, hopefully from next year, we're hoping to run some from our Melbourne campus as well. So this is just so students can get that hands-on experience. Um, so it's not, you're not just graduating from sitting in the classroom and doing theory and exams, you're actually getting hands-on experience. Um, and practical experience. Students also have to do um, work integrated learning. Um, however, we, as we have a lot of students obviously who do work, students often do, especially our online students, apply for recognition of prior learning for the workshops and um, for the industrial experience as well. Um, we don't expect you to have to do these if you're already working in industry. So a lot of our students do apply for RPL. For any on-campus students, um, we have an internship that's available as part of your course to be able to complete these hours. So lots of practical hands-on and that picture that you see there is at our campus here in Perth. Um, we have two buildings and it's outside one of the buildings where they do a lot of the, the civil engineering work and the concreting. So that was at, I think, the beginning of the year. So that was around February time when this picture was taken and they were um, working through their workshop. So as mentioned also, we do have those remote and virtual labs. So again, you're not expected if you know you live somewhere far away from Perth and we said, you know, oh, we need to do a laboratory and therefore you need to come to Perth. That would be craziness. So um, we have our virtual labs and our remote labs. Um, so you can see there our virtual labs are basically computer hosting software. There's a variety of software that you can log into. And then our remote labs are connected to physical equipment. Um, so you can watch and move and see how they work. So you just book in for a specific session that's available to use any of those. So very um, digital, very hands-on, but also means you don't have to be in the campus to be able to use these. Just a little bit of information on the entry requirements, fees and payments. So we haven't listed all the entry requirements as there's a range. So if you do go to our website, you will see all the information regarding entry requirements specifically from your country. Um, and then with regards to fees, you are um, fees are issued per study period, depending on the number of units taken. So if you're only doing two units, you only pay for two units. Um, they're paid at the beginning of each study period. It could be by credit card, direct deposit. It could be monthly installments um, that's available also. And for any Australian citizens, we do have fee help. With scholarships, again, if you have a look at um, 
the link there if you go to that link later um, that gives you all the information on the partial scholarships that we do have available so you can have a look through those. So with our lecturers, a little bit like our teams, um, what we have around the world, we have lecturers from around the world. So you can see here um, just a small selection of our lecturers uh, and where they are based. So we have a lot of our lecturers that um, are working in industry. So another positive thing about a lot of these guys is that what they are teaching um, is again, not just basic theory, they have the knowledge from industry, um, they are all working or have worked or have their own companies. Um, and for uh, anybody who does come to study, you'll especially um, the bachelor programs, um, you will get to know um, Mr. Hardy Harb, who is actually based in Barcelona, um, but does a lot of our classes for us. Um, he's an amazing lecturer and has a lot of experience in industry. So again, they're from everywhere and anywhere um, and a variety of different experience. And that being global is really interesting to hear from different countries, how things work there and, and what they do. So um, really good experience that you have these people as your lecturers. So just as we talked about learning support officers and how they work with you on the administration side of things and make sure um, you know what you're doing for your assessments, your lecturers are there for the academic side of things. So if you have questions specifically um, about the content of what you're studying, then these guys are available to answer all of the content questions. These guys are the engineers. Um, they answer your academic questions and the learning support officers answer anything that is not an academic question. So they are available obviously between your classes, on email. Um, if you're unable to get hold of them, always contact your learning support officer and they'll work with getting you in contact with your lecturer if there's a reason and you can't. Okay, so you've listened to me for a good 25 minutes, I think. So I am going to be quiet now and I'm going to hand over to our um, first student ambassador. So Ilana, you, all yours. Um, hi, thank you, Emma, for the great information you shared with us today. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ilana and I'm here to share my experience with EIT as a student and give you some insights. Um, my days are packed as a working mother, wife, two little kids. It's not easy to find the time for myself, but I seem to manage with well with EIT structure and I genuinely believe that if I can do it, so can you. Um, so I just would like to share a small um, inspirational quote from the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Okay. okay, so the first question I would like to answer is, what are you studying with EIT and when did you start? So in 2016, I enrolled for an advanced diploma in electrical and instrumentation in the mining industry. And I completed that in 2017. So I enjoyed doing my diploma so much with EIT that I decided to go do something a little bit more challenging. And I enrolled for the bachelor's degree in electrical engineering in 2019. And I'm so happy to say that I'm currently busy with my final year projects. Okay, question number two, why did you choose the program you're currently studying? So my first job um, was in 2010 as a trainee in drawings and design at an EPCM company. And yeah, I was introduced to many engineering disciplines, um, including piping, civil, structural, all of that. But electrical engineering captivated me the most and therefore I decided to concentrate on electrical courses. Question number three, 
is how is your experience with EIT so far? So I must say EIT is very reliable. Um, not only does EIT get accredited by the relevant educational authorities, but it also has qualified and experienced faculty members which are always ready to assist you. Um, as Emma mentioned about the LSOs, you get assigned for each unit or module. They have given me great academic advice. Um, the support that they've given me is amazing. They like, they're really the angels of EIT. And those little reminder emails they send of your assessments coming up really helps you to keep on track. And then the challenging and informative modules. Um, the content of each module is informative and up to date with the latest innovations. The assessments prepare you for your exams and um, the remote labs, as earlier mentioned, really gives you that practical applications experience. Then question number four, what is your favorite part of studying through EIT? Um, EIT provides, provides a structured framework for easy studying planning. Um, the lectures are highly knowledgeable and really readily available to assist me anytime I need. Um, students receive personalized care and attention. You really, you don't feel like a number. You are part of the EIT family. Um, and online exams offered by EIT eliminates the hassle of traveling for exams. Then question five, what has EIT taught me? Okay, most definitely time management and self-discipline. Being an online student, you do need that self-discipline to go and take the time, do your studies, do your assessments and be on time. Um, the, the other thing that have taught has taught me with EIT is the, the fact that you, you communicate with people worldwide. You, um, it's a great experience to work on projects with different cultures and time zones and trying to figure out how to deal with the differences in people. And then another thing that I enjoy about EIT is that they encourage self-reflection. And this is very, this is essential for engineers to enhance their professional development, contribute more effectively to their teams and deliver better and more responsible engineering solutions. In question six, how do you see this program benefiting your professional career? This program will enhance my skills and improve my drawing and design abilities. Expand engineering opportunities and prepare to become a professional engineer. Additionally, I'm eager to explore renewable energy. Um, last question is question number seven. Any specific highlights while studying at EIT? Um, engaging with, with online group projects and connecting with individuals was definitely one of my highlights. Um, benefiting, benefiting from dedicated lecturers and who definitely has exceeded my expectations and receiving valuable guidance and support from my LSOs. Those are definitely my highlights with EIT. Okay, let me hand over to Lee, another student in math. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lee and I'm a student ambassador for uh, EIT. 
Um, I've turned my video on, but somehow it's not working back. Share video, anyway. Um, yeah, so my name is Lee. I currently work as a project manager for an engineering company uh, here in Perth, Western Australia. Uh, I'm currently uh, studying the Bachelor of Science Mechanical Engineering and I'm an online student. I started in February 2020 uh, and now I'm in my final year uh, and I've got one more semester to go and, and then I graduate. Uh, so my question structure is a lot like um, Alana's. Um, my experience so far um, has been amazing. Uh, I've had the privilege, privilege of collaborating with one of the lecturers on two projects I've managed in the um, past financial year. And um, it's just really reassuring to see that the lecturers at EIT uh, maintain their strong connections with the industry. If you look here, this is a um, tank that I project managed all the way from the design phase to the install. So one of the lecturers that if you guys come to EIT, you'll uh, meet, which is Dharmit Tarkal. He runs the uh, engineering uh, drawing unit and also the process um, plant and piping layout unit. So this um, uh, tank was designed to API 650. <clears throat> And then we had to uh, decommission the old tank and reinstall. So I uh, basically got in touch with Dharmit through his um, personal email. And we both went through the whole calculation stage um, to make sure that the design was safe and uh, yeah, that everything would be okay for the install, not only to maintain the um, occupancy of the vessel which are uh, housed paraffin wax um, but also structurally designed for human occupancy when they are uh, doing their maintenance and operations uh, what i choose the program uh, given my background as a boiler maker and coated welder for nearly 20 years i'm not sure what they call it over uh, around the rest of the world but it, other people might call it a heavy metal fabricator so um, yeah, being a boiler maker and coated welder, this just seemed the like easiest transition. I've spent my time in oil and gas fabrication, uh, fabricating offshore jumper schools and subsea vessels, and working in um, shipbuilding as well, working on both defence defence vessels and also commercial class like rig tenders and jack up barges. This just seemed like the easiest transition. And if you look to the right here, this was another project which I collaborated with Dharmit on. So these are 1.2 metre uh, diameter um, spools, uh, pressure vessels. Um, and basically we, we needed a way to transport them. So in Australia, you can't transport anything that's 5.5 metres, oh, sorry, over 5.5 metres diameter wide or 5.5 di um, diameter or oh, 5.5 meters high. So me and Dharmit collaborated to come up with a lifting frame and a transport frame that would, you know, suit, suit what we needed. And once again, yeah, the project was success, uh, delivered on time, under budget, and uh, obviously didn't fail in the lift. <clears throat> My favourite part of studying through EIT. Um, so obviously working, um, I, right now I work as a project manager, my, my basic hours are 50 hours, but I also, for my company, I also manage all shutdowns uh, you know, um, within one of our clients. So when a shutdown is happening, which is usually four to five times a year, I'll work 84 hours a week. Um, so be, being able to study online allows me to not sacrifice any time um, from my job by having to go into a classroom. So that's a really uh, big advantage for me and definitely one of the um, key aspects of studying through EIT. What has EIT taught me? Uh, 
through my IT experience, um, basically I've learned um, time management is the biggest thing. Uh, you're always juggling every got outside pressures and commitment for your family or you know, just general sense of life. Um, it's really taught me to juggle all that and <clears throat> basically come out with um, being able to maintain my academic activities. Uh, how do I see this benefiting my professional career? <clears throat> like I said, as, uh, as someone with a trade background, uh, it's eye-opening about the theoretical underpinnings behind the mechanical projects designs at EIT. So b before I started my undergraduate, oh, my, my degree, uh, I'd never really taken part in any sort of um, online labs or labs at all. You know, it was all on the job learning. Um, since being with EIT, I've learned uh, CAD software using uh, SolidWorks, interactive heat transfer software, uh, MATLAB. Um, yeah, there's many more, but uh, yeah, it, it's really good to see that even though you don't have to be in the classroom physically, you can still uh, gain the skills required through their online learning platform. Uh, and that leads us to a Q and A. Uh, I suppose I'll hand back to Barry for this. But if anyone has any questions, just type them in the chat box. Thanks for coming, guys. Perfect. Uh, thanks very much, Lee. Uh, and I just want to say uh, thanks very much to uh, Ilana as well, and uh, thanks very much to our audience. Uh, I think it was a great experience, and also just sharing. Uh, what you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis so that people can get to have like a full overview of um, what EIT is all about. So thanks very much for, for that. Um, I just want to quickly check, uh, do we have any questions? Maybe you can just pop them in the comment section. Anyone? Okay, I'm just gonna quickly uh, bring back Emma. Emma, did you want to say maybe last few words? Sure, thank you, Barry. Um, again, just a, a huge thank you to, to both um, of our ambassadors. It's really interesting to hear from you guys and I always think it's amazing. Um, studying and working at the same time is really difficult, so um, really impressive that that you both do that. And Ilana, I know you have children too. So adding in that to the mix is amazing. And also, as I said, thank you for both taking the time out because I know you're very busy people. We really appreciate it. And and yeah, thanks, Barry, um, for, for organizing this. And to the audience, if there are any specific questions, um, please do let us know. But thank you. Thanks very much. Um... Emma, uh, Augustine, I, I do have your details. I'll I'll send you the, the, the information on that one. Thanks very much. Anyone, uh, last few uh, questions, uh, feedback? Okay, I'm just gonna quickly share our details. So should you have any suggestions? Uh, should you have any feedback uh, with regarding to this session, please feel free to send us an email and then we are happy to assist you. Hi, Hilary. Uh, not sure if I get your question right. Yes, we do have a bachelor in civil engineering online. So I'm not sure whether you wanted quotations on that one, uh, price list.
Hi, Nico. Yes, you can apply for credits uh, using your um, qualifications from um, external qual uh, institutions. Mohammed, I can answer that one. Do you, do we give online education for business management? We don't. We specifically look at engineering, so we don't have business management, unfortunately. And we do have postgraduate programs, Victor. Um, I think we very we did a session a couple of weeks on postgraduate um, sessions, but I'm sure um, we can send you the information. But also that information is on the website too. So we have our masters, graduate certificates, and graduate diplomas. I just posted EAT course link, so you can just uh, follow that just to learn more about our programs. Okay, I think uh, that's about it for today. Thanks very much, Emma. And once again, thanks to our audience. Uh, if you are looking forward to uh, attend more of uh, these sessions, you can always just go on our website, go under events, and then you can be able to see our upcoming webinars. And uh, thanks very much, Emma. Thanks, Ilana. Thanks, Lee.